Good morning, folks. We've got cosmology, electroquakes, and science related to the solar micronova trigger. We've also got cold fronts to check, and we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours were quiet from an eruptive standpoint, but the coronal holes crossing the north remind us of the current geomagnetic conditions. The solar winds surged again yesterday afternoon, purple line, ending a slight decline in stream intensity and driving plasma pressure to the highest marks of this young solar cycle. Geomagnetic storms stepped it up a notch as well. Moderate storm intensity was the peak, and while we will go much higher this sunspot cycle, it does represent the first noteworthy geomagnetic storm of it. It was driven entirely by the heliospheric current sheet and coronal hole solar wind stream. A surprisingly early snowfall in the Alps broke a record for the lowest altitude snow at this time of year. Of course, the cold has already begun to come to the United States, and out west we feel it already as the chill off the jet stream dip took us from the 80s to freezing in about 36 hours. Jet stream charging eastward right now, cold coming there too. I read about as good a mainstream blog article on this topic as one can find. While the push at modified gravity is not the observer's cup of tea, the want to replace dark matter sure is, and the description here of why there is a need to do that is solid at the satellite galaxy level. When they run simulations of the cosmos, they find many, many dwarf satellite galaxies to big ones like the Milky Way or Andromeda. You may know the largest of the Milky Way, called the Large and Small Magellanic Clouds. There are supposed to be tons of these in random orientations around the galaxies, but that's not what we see. We find far fewer of them than expected, but more importantly, there's no randomness to their orbits. They find planes to share with other satellites. And that leads us into an in-depth analysis of their motions here at the local neighborhood. While they've known this discrepancy exists qualitatively here at Andromeda and at Centaurus A, this is the first in-depth quantitative look and it shows the exact same thing. We're coming to earthquake science next. A quick note that the finish line of this new fluid pressure from the deep science involves what makes those pressures rise and fall, both within the liquid and the ground. And we know that these movements give away electromagnetic pre-earthquake signals. Total electron content confirmed to present anomalous activity before such upticks, and another confirmation of the critical frequency changes before large seismic events in Italy in 2016. That pre-seismic electromagnetism implicates the involvement of the global electric circuit and the telluric systems of the crust. This was why we said the sun should be an earthquake factor in 2011, and since then it's been a lot of confirmation on those electromagnetic precursors. The geomagnetic to geoelectric translation is no longer ambiguous and is gaining maturity as a scientific subfield. And of course, we do keep seeing the confirmations that solar phenomena tend to precede large seismic events. That is the second critical paper on that topic just since July. Now last but not least, we come to a recurrent nova, one that went off in the 1860s, the 1940s, and is likely to recur again within a decade. They say they think they see the beginnings of the eruptive preparation phase beginning now, but they also see something vastly more important. Observers, you know my big thing with the solar micronova trigger has been that, sure, accretion-driven recurrent nova binary should be a real thing in the heavens, but it's not the only way you get to an accumulation-driven recurrent nova. It was relatively holeless logic, but lacked observations to confirm. Not anymore. Folks, there is not a constant feeding of material down onto the star, but it comes sporadically, in spurts, waves, a transient accretion high state, and that's all that's needed. Folks, that's the galactic current sheet impact, except it also brings the galactic magnetic reversal with it. We know there are tons of the alleged binary accretors where they can't find any second star. Here, we have definitive proof you don't need a constant feeding of material, just a sharp change in space environment. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn more in the Cosmic Disaster playlist. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.